<clears throat> in conversation with Frank Zarquine Jordan, award-winning Black history historian Zach, award-winning Black history historian Frank Jordan, seven-time published author of Black history, he has received the Knight Turner Exit Book of the Year Award in 2018 for his literature work uncovering the evil of America, what the CDC and FDA failed to tell you. He has also been interviewed by CBX Maralian during the month of February 2021. Also, he has written for television networks such as PBS and have received 18 Literary Writers Award for his works. Born and raised in Brooklyn, NY, NY, Frank has taught and lectured at over 35 universities and colleges, libraries, bookstores, and a wide range of public speaking. His book spans the unmentioned and unmerited history of Blacks and Latinos that somehow is forgotten and untaught in classrooms. His research covers ancient painting, history of land ownership before Columbus, toxic food ingredient, unknown Black and Latino scientists, engineers, craftsmen, mathematicians, and hundreds of unmentioned unmerited inventions. He has ghostwritten for PBX television and have been invited on countless television as well as podcast interviews to give and shed light upon what many do not. He has written and became a published author in 20 in 2012 this has been a great journey as it continued to educate and give and give the whole factor to so many his books are taught and sold throughout over 42 independent bookstores universities and educational learning institution throughout the globe including amazon and Barnes and noble and on today's episode of 420 view it's my utmost pleasure and joy to offer the show today from Zaquan Jordan. How are you doing, Frank? Hey, uh, first and foremost, all praises to the most high you how I appreciate you, uh, Peter, for having me on the show. I'm doing great. I'm I'm doing great. You know, just been laying low for a little while, but uh, other than that, I'm doing great. <laughs> Absolutely, it's quite lovely, actually, to have you on the show today. Quite exciting. We're gonna be having a conversation around your amazing works that I've been following for quite a while now. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Frank, you know, I see that you have written so many sparkling titles on different amazing teams. And I would like us to start today's conversation with one that I found the description of it to be quite alluring, captivating, and that is 500 Years of America Deception or Mentioned Secret World History. Could you tell us about the making of this book? What inspired you to write? 500 Years of American Deception. And if you have a copy of it there, I'd love to show to the camera while you answer my right. question. <laughs> hey, listen, you, you know, uh, hey, listen, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I, I do have one, but it's it's way over there. And, you know, oh. I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'll probably run and probably go get it and come back. <laughs> it was one of the ones that I didn't, I actually get but um you know that book was actually um actually inspired by what's not taught you know in mm -hmm. the schools and institutions um in a in a art and architectural sense um mm -hmm. as far as uh it goes all the way back to ancient art all the way up to you know american art uh here um you know just mainly in the 1400s that was probably one of the most deceptive periods wow. you know in um of our time um and you can go and you can look it up it was called the renaissance period where you had um you know uh commissioned painters like rembrandt um you know you had guys like uh michelangelo and uh da vinci where they were actually paid a commission by the popes of rome actually to actually resurface and redo all the dark art and to redo it and put european art for the deception you know, of society and for white supremacy. Hmm. Well, that's quite amazing, really. So, you know, judging from the title alone, 500 Years of American Deception, or mentioned secret word history, it's alone very captivating and quite amazing. And I was just curious to 
you know, ask, how, how does it come about? I mean, what inspired the making of this book? How does it, and you know, I know you're, you're, you have background as an historian and an history person. I would love to talk about that as we unfold in the interview, because I really love to know, you know, more about your background as an historian. Maybe you would even love to talk about that currently. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the you know, one of the biggest things that um our people um, you know, uh is that they're actually misled on a lot of things uh yeah. in society. And I say this all the time, you know, when you go back and when you dig up ancient history, uh the things that was taught to us over here in America, you know, we came over here in the late 1500s and 1600s by force. Yeah. Um, you know, in the 1400s, you know, you had, you know, art that was original art, you know, that was actually you know, in places like Jerusalem, places like Egypt, you know, that was dark art. And when you go mm -hmm. back in the history, you know, you find out, you know, even when you, you know, you you go to the library and you research books, you know, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's really not that hard, Peter. You know, and, and the reason why I say that is because you can go to local libraries uh, anywhere, yeah. you know, and you can look up certain things like the Renaissance period. You can look up um, Russian art. You can look up the Byzantine Empire. Um, and those yeah. things that were taught to us, you know, um, that people critique today or that is seen, you know, um, European, um, when you go back, let me show you something real quick. Um, yes. This is a book called Art Treasures of, uh, of actually Museums of Moscow. Uh, when oh. you go into this book, you'll find in Russia, okay, you'll find art like oh, this. Now, this is too, actually, this is a picture of Vladimir. The great. Mm. And you notice that this is a dark man, okay, along with another prince as well, too. So when you mm. go back before the 1400s, uh, Peter, and when you research and when you do your research, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to insult your intelligence, you'll find all the great people that the colonists and the Europeans have portrayed themselves as being mm. great. You'll find them as, as dark skinned people as well, too. The disciples, Christ goes all the way. The list goes down forever mm. wow wow that's quite amazing really i love your take on this and i'm a huge lover of history you know it's one of the session we have non-fiction category of literature so i love history so well right so so well more like the same love i have a memoir stuff like that an autobiography so it's quite lovely you shared a bit about that thank you for mentioning and oh, now I frank <clears throat> yeah and now you also have another title in the name of the greatest show on earth, the destruction of a chosen nation. For readers who haven't read the book yet and without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect in terms of teams picking up the greatest show on earth? Yeah, actually, I have that book right here. And actually, this is yeah. um, beautiful actually, cover. This is actually one of my best sellers. Oh. And you know, brother Peter, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you know. You know, the reason why I called it the greatest show on earth is because, um, you know, America has been a very deceptive. You know, you're in Nigeria. You can tell me better than I can tell you. You know, over here in America, you know, not only have we been westernized, you know, and it's gonna sting. This gonna sting. This segment is gonna sting a little bit. You know, um, mm -hmm. not only have we got, not only have we been westernized, but as well also is that there's a lot of deception you know, that has mm -hmm. been taught to us. And the greatest show on earth is that how we've been used, how we've been portrayed in um in the public eye, you know, Absolutely. as far as like our talents. And let me just give you, um you know, one example. Uh, back, I would probably say during a time of segregation and probably before that, um, mm -hmm. you had colonists and you had Europeans that used to make fun of us, you know, by actually, you know, uh, painting pictures as us being, you know, part of a minstrel show, um, you know, and other things, how they used to exaggerate the lips on us and how they used to actually do things like this, you know, mm. paintings, uh, minstrel show with the big lips and stuff like that and make fun of us, you know, um, you know, why make fun of stuff that you're actually kind of like envious of, but the greatest show on earth is that it's a lot of deception, you know, that goes on in, um, you know, in Black Hollywood. Look at what's going on now, brother Peter. You know, let me just, mm. you know, give you an example. You know, the thing that's going on with, um, you know, your man uh, from Bad Boy, uh, you know, P. Diddy. 
um, it's more, it's, it's always more to it than meets the eye, you know, and that's the reason why I said it's the greatest show on earth because, you know, in mm. order to obtain and gain riches, you know, in the society, there's a lot of things that you have to go through, um, up under the opposites of negative in the hands of, you know, spiritual, you know, um, you know, masonry, you know, and may mm. I dare say, uh, satanic rituals as well too. So a lot of times in society, Brother Peter, you know, they'll deem people crazy or they'll deem you a rebel for coming out and telling the truth. The only time that you're deemed a rebel is when you come out and you tell the truth. But, you know, all day in school, you know, in the school systems and educational systems, you know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of insulted. You know, they still teach your kids about George Washington. You know, George Washington had over 300 slaves and Thomas <laughs> Jefferson, but they don't demonize that, Peter. You understand what I'm saying? Only time yeah. when you come out with the truth with facts of the truth and you go against the grain of society of what's been taught, then they demonize you as someone that's crazy. Mm. You don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. the things that's going on in society, as far as like right now, what's going on with, uh, with, with P Diddy, you know, there was somebody by the name of Hugh Hefner um, that had a playboy mansion as I remember. And, and in no way, Am I, you know, uh, saying what, you know, uh, P. Diddy has done is correct because it, it's a shame. Mm. You know, he needs to be put up under the jail for what he's done. You know, oh. you can just imagine what wasn't caught on camera. You know, this is just mm. one incident from 2016. So you can imagine what he has done off camera. So you got a guy by the name of Hugh Hefner. He erected the Playboy Mansion bunny, the bunny mansion, I think in 1971. And wow. nobody has brought this man's name to light. This man didn't spend a day in jail. I think maybe in the late, in the early 90s, I think Hugh Hefner may have gotten zapped one time for tax invasion. You know, but as mm. far as what he was doing, P. Diddy really is the same thing. But they always find a way to actually collar us and let them go, you know, on with their life. This man, Hugh Hefner didn't spend one day in jail and neither was his reputation tarnished for doing what he was doing mm. so you got to kind of look at things like that you know um you know we're the greatest show on earth because why because you know we we entertain you know uh we entertain white america we've been entertaining white america but it's always a flip side to that you know you know the, the devil let me tell you something satan take it satan give it and satan take it away as well too well wow. Well, I love your amazing description, really. And I see it's quite beautiful, quite educative as well, and quite didactic. Thank you for mentioning and giving us a sip snippet of what you'd expect picking up greatest show on it. And that's such a thoughtful title, even. Yeah. Right. To name and, a book. And Peter, let me and Peter, let me say this too, right? Um, listen, you know, nothing is nothing is never what it seems. You know, let me just get that out there too. Um, listen, I can go, I can go in a mall right now and find I someone. Know. You can go on and on and on. That, 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 that can be an R and B singer that just doesn't have the spotlight. I can go yeah. in a barber shop. Look, I was born and raised in Farragut Projects in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, oh. I can look. I grew up with plenty of guys that can rap better than Jay Z. Most of the guys that's out here. So, does that actually make them? Does that actually make the ones that you see now better? No. Okay. They just went through certain rituals, which a lot of people failed to mm. understand. They yeah. went through a lot of rituals. Okay. That granted mm. them the gift of what they have. A lot of people don't go through certain rituals that have a better talent. Okay. And they stay stagnant in what they are. This whole society is, 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 is based off of this ran, you know, off mm. of, a lot of evil and wickedness in high places, you know, that you really can't imagine. Trust me when I tell you. Mm. Wow. Wow, that's quite amazing, really. I love your take on this. I love your answers to these questions, really. They're quite deep. Thank you for mentioning. And now let's move on to your other book. You know, you have another title in the name of All Say Can You See? You mentioned history of terrorism on Blacks in America. Honestly, that's, I quite love your titles. I love the subject line. I love the fact that they exponent in so many history works and they're quite big, really. Now, would you like to tell us about the making of it and how its inspiration came to be? 
Yeah, beautiful yeah, cover. You know, uh, you know, again, Peter. You know, uh, you know, again. You know, it's it's is the things that aren't seen and the things that aren't taught are the are the things actually that's the most valid to you. So mm. you know, you know, like I said, you know, you know, every across the globe. You know, yeah. the kids are being taught about, you know, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and, you know, here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail. Um, mm. It's okay to teach your kids and your family, let them grow up on falsehood and fallacy and, um, you know, things of that nature. Anything that's going to hold you back or anything that's going to keep you from uniting and coming to the power of the Most High, you know, that's what they use in society. You know, it's, it's, it's mm. crazy because... You know, the things that are negative is deemed good and the things that are good, well, okay, it's bad. Right. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you, let me, let, let, let me ask you this, uh, Peter. The N-word, which I'm not going to say, you know, out of respect towards you, the N-word, that's a word that's associated with anything that's, that's bad. You know, you can't think of anything and you can't try to get me to understand, you know, why that word is popularized so much today. It used to mm. be taboo even to say that word just five years ago. Now, mm. the N-word is being used so loosely now, it's almost becoming acceptable now. Even the people mm. that used to say, don't say the word, now it's almost like they're accepting and accept. That goes to show you right there what we have come to in this society. The things that were demonized and that were, you know, something that were negative that we wouldn't mention they're mentioning our yeah. households, let alone on the television screen. Now those things are becoming normalized, and now those things are becoming part of just the English language. So that's mm. never anything good, you know, to go around and call your sisters or your brothers, you know, or your moms, you know, the N word. And now you got guys that have podcasts, they just say it so loosely now. That's what society well. wants, you know, sin sells, you know, people want, they're so prone and they're so, you know, uh, 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 you know, they have a proclivity to, to marginalize so much evil in society. That's what's taught in the households. That's what's shown on TV, you know, mm. but it's, it's the society is ran. Okay. And it's governed by evil people. You know, I mean, that's, yeah. that's not up for debate. That's something that's yeah. not up for debate from the time you get up in the morning, from the time you lay down at night, anything you can think of, okay, is on a negative hand right now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's very true, actually. It's very obvious, not only in America, but everywhere, you know, every part of the world, <laughs> right. you know, you can see it everywhere. It's, it, it's an evil spreading so fast, spreading like a book fire in Amazon. Thank you right. for sharing. Thank you. Absolutely, 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 Peter. And 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 you know, just to go back, you know, to um, you know, the book that I uh, actually wrote. Oh, say, can you see? This was my yeah. last book that I had written. Um, oh. and inside of this book, okay, again, is is education that they don't teach you in schools. You know that they try to overlook. You know, I know when I was going to school, Peter. I know when I was going mm -hmm. to school. I, I I listen. I know that um, in the seventies when I was yeah. going to school. You know, the only thing that was taught, you know, the only thing that I had a chance to uh, uh, read the teachers was hitting on me was, you know, was Judy Bloom books and see Spot Run, see Jane, you know, uh, pick up sticks, uh, see, you know, uh, 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 Richard go to the store. But, you know, <laughs> when you look beyond that um, and when you look at the way that they, you know, uh, institutionalize or they kind of romanticize, you know, their story. But when you look yeah. at not when you look at 9-11 that just happened in 2000, 2001, um, you would actually feel empathetic towards, you know, a lot of things, you know, and the people that got killed during 9-11. But when you look back on, listen, let me say this, and, and, and I must say this. Slavery, okay, was from lasted, slavery lasted from the late 1500s all the way up into so-called 1865. That was the wow. longest act of terrorism in this world's history all yeah. right but they want to take that out of the schools okay so we can't relate or we can't mm. associate ourselves with the bad things that's associated with that but a mm. lot more brother peter has happened over the course of that and i history that they don't talk about 
Look, I'm I'm gonna start with something recent. Look at um, I think it was in 2015, um, mm -hmm. in South Carolina, there was a guy by the name of Dylan Roof. Okay, that went into a church, an all black church. I know it's gonna sting a little bit, uh, 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 Peter. Okay, he went into an all black church and murdered nine people. Okay, and as wow. a yeah, right, murder just went in there and murdered nine people. Okay, they Can tried to be peaceful to him. They tried to be cordial to him. You know, um, you know, we're gonna let all people in. You know, and as a result of that, you know, nine of our brothers and sisters were killed. And this was this, this just happened like in 2015. And the mm. cops that actually arrested him actually took him to Burger King and asked him, what did he want, well, to eat, you know, before they take him in? You know, you have um, in Philadelphia in 1985, this is something that they don't talk about, but I wrote about it in my book. You know, you had 11 people that were murdered, okay, during the time they had a move, they had a MOVE movement in Philadelphia where you had uh, people up that looked like you and I, Peter, okay, that mm. actually sent it off, um, you know, blocks. I think it was maybe 12 blocks, okay, of houses. And, you know, they just actually just, you know, said, hey, listen, we want to be by ourselves. We want to run our own water. We want to grow our own gardens. And the government went and bombed that place. And I think it was over 60 homes that was destroyed. This is in Philadelphia in, in 1985. This is something mm. that they don't talk about. Look up the Elaine massacre when you had over um, 200 Blacks you know, uh, women and kids that were killed during the Elaine massacre. I think that was during, I think that was actually in Mississippi. Okay. Wow. Um, during the Elaine massacre, it was either Mississippi or it was Memphis, Tennessee, you know, one or the other, but look up the Elaine massacre. This is things that they don't talk about in school, you know, at, at, at all. And they definitely not going to give us reparation for this. Not at this point, not at this point. Mm. Wow. Wow, that's very true, really. That's quite very deep. That's one of the reasons why I consider your subject lines and book title quite educative. Yeah? Very educative, quite didactic. It's one that you read and you learn quite a lot from. You know, so many hidden secrets exposed in form of literature writing. That's quite lovely. Thank you. And now, you know, you may want to agree with me that your sort of themes are the one that spike controversy, I mean, argument, debate, especially with constructing point of view. Like, we're talking about slavery all this way. We're talking about Black history and this. Some people are like, oh, no, no, it doesn't work that way. You know, they might want to defend, you know, in their own case. Now, I would like to ask you, how do you handle feedbacks and criticism of your book as a writer, especially the negative ones, if you ever had one in time past? Would you love to talk about that? All the time. Oh, listen, all, look, all, all the time. You know, um, I must be doing something <laughs> right if I'm getting negative feedback, you know, because that's one thing that our people, our people along with everyone else have. They have a problem with the truth. You know, um, <laughs> hey, listen, look, they have a problem with the truth. The last time I remember, listen, they, look, they hung, they hung Christ, okay? They murdered mm. Malcolm X. You know, mm. Malcolm X wasn't lying about nothing, okay? Neither was Christ and the disciples. OK, so you got to look at things like that. People who tell the truth, they've always had a hard time. Matthew, I think yeah. the problem Matthew, I think was skint. OK, so you got to look at it like this. When you tell the truth and you get a, and you get pushback on telling the truth, you know that it's something that you're doing that's poking it's a nerve. Yeah. I don't mind doing what I'm doing at all because I know this is this is what I was chosen to do. OK, I, I'll die mm. for this against all odds. You know, it's, it's look, if, 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 if you don't stand for something, you die for nothing. You know, so well, a lot of men, Peter, a lot of men have just become so feeble and they become so weak that they're scared to speak out on the evil doings, okay, yeah. of the society. Scared to speak out, scared to teach about it, scared to talk about it in their households. Mm -hmm. The kids running the whole entire household. Your kid come home now and talk about what they want to do and how they want to critique and what they want to be, okay, that's, mm -hmm. that's negative. And deep down inside, as a parent, you know a lot of this stuff that the kids are into today they're given mm. a choice by society because it's negative and it's evil. So as a parent, what you do, you don't want to push back on your kid because you want that relationship, that friend relationship with your kid, which you shouldn't want and you shouldn't have. There's no parent out here today that should want a friend relationship. You're the parent. You're the dad. You're the mom. Keep those titles, okay, within yourself. There's no such thing as my kids being my friend. OK, I may tease my kids every once in a while and, and, and say, hey, you know, you're, you're my best friend. 
But my kids know, okay, deep down inside, that's something that I really don't mean, okay, because my kids have a greater respect for me, okay, as mm. a dad, okay, and a man of the most high, first and foremost, okay? There's no such thing as your kids, hey, you know, I want to be somebody's friend. That's where you go wrong as a parent. You're letting society mm. and the internet, okay, tell you what internet, to do, yeah. okay, Absolutely. to your kids, okay, how to dress, what to do, the decisions. There was no, you know, it's, it's, it's right is right. And wrong is wrong. That's what you're supposed to teach your kids. You're yeah. the parent. You're the adult. Always remember that. Well, that's quite amazing, really. And 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 I love your take on that because so many people are going by what the social media dictates, and it's quite a shame, really, on how people kind of live their life based off what they're saying on the internet. It's affecting so many people. I mean, so many people, so many friends. Relationship, family have been disintegrated just because of what the one is trying to follow on one supposed on true story over the internet. And you know, it's it's a world of social media, it's a world where people feel so engulfed and carried away by the likes being shown on the screen of our phones, of our laptops. And you never can get it, it's quite really funny, really. There's one very funny incident that happened in, in my city. I know it's a bit off from our conversation. A particular musician who went ahead saying he bought uh, a G-Wagon car for 60 million naira while he intentionally bought it for 27 million and he hasn't even balanced the money yet. He paid 14 million. Wow. It's about to balance 13. He went on the internet and said, yeah, I've gotten this and it's 60 million naira. Uh, my... So later on, the police had to come to arrest him because he couldn't bal balance off. And I was like, why would you, for Christ's sake, I mean, you are an upcoming, not even an upcoming, it's quite well known. I think he had a song with one of your, you know, American artists, I don't know, maybe Skepta, there about Fisher Together. And I was like, why would you come on the internet and say you bought a car for 60 million naira while you haven't even balanced up the actual price? You know, right. it's a world of deception, of falsity. And, you know, people tend to, I've seen so many cases also of family condition, family stories coming up on the internet. You yeah, say this is how you should treat your children. This is how fathers should relate to their kids. And everything is full of lies. And we tend to act based on what we've seen on social media. It's a shame, really, number of people that have been carried away by this force flying over the internet, really. Yeah, I love the father you mentioned that, really. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, listen, you're, look, you're 100% correct. You know, um, we have, you know, it, you know, as a parent, you know, we have stopped having those conversations that we're supposed to have with our kids. Absolutely. It's more or less, it's like demonized, almost mm. to tell the kids the truth today. You know, yeah. um, you know, when they go to school, you know, they're taught certain things. And when they come back from school as a parent, you're supposed to correct your kids and say, that's not true. This is definitely not true. Mm. No, you don't want to do that. As a parent, you're supposed to be a parent. You're supposed to be a counselor. You know, yeah. you're supposed to be, Absolutely. you know, right. You're supposed to be a counselor as well, too, you Teacher. know, as a parent. And you're supposed to really give your kids really not too many choices when it comes to doing right, that's just the problem. Too many parents are giving their kids choices and bad choices, mm. okay? They're not giving their kids the good choices. They're giving their kids wrong choices, okay? Choices. Instead of you being a parent and you having those tough conversations with your kid that I know that I didn't get, okay, when I was a mm. kid, mm. you know, um, those are the type of conversations that you're supposed to have yeah. and you're supposed to just stop the generational, you know, um, unknowing i was going to use mm. another word but I, i'm not going to do it you're supposed to stop the generational unknowing of certain things and that won't flow into the next generation absolutely you know, of ignorance you know because that's yeah. exactly what it is if you're still going around talking about santa claus is coming to town you know and here comes peter cottontail hopping down the bunny trail you know <laughs> hey listen you know you know and, and, and you and i both know bunny rabbits don't lay eggs man bunnies have mm. bunny rabbits have funny <laughs> they don't lay eggs man okay so if you still have that conversation and, and reindeers flying in the sky you know i've never mm. seen a deer that can fly you know <laughs> so if you're still having those conversations and you're not telling your kids the truth don't listen you know what a lot of our people do they're ashamed to actually tell their kids the truth because of what they were taught 
they don't, they're scared of what their dads or they're scared of what their moms may think of them and their relatives. Oh no, I'm not going to tell, you know, them that, or, you know, you may have yeah. my aunt or, you know, yeah. my niece, they may get upset at me because I, Hey, listen, listen, sometimes you got to break the generational ignorance and you just got to mm. tell the truth. You know, um, that's one of the things that's lacking amongst our people, you know, blacks, Puerto Ricans, West Indians, we're almost like we're scared to tell our kids the truth about things. Mm. Well, that's amazing. And I can actually go on and on if time would permit us. Well, you know, it won't actually. <laughs> so it's quite, <laughs> it's quite a lovely and very deep discussion uh, around your works, really. Quite beautiful. And now let's <laughs> talk about how you get your inspirations and ideas. You know, I've always been fascinated. I've always been surprised and taken aback by our writers know, craft long sentences and bring words together in a way that it eventually makes a great novel. And this always leaves me thinking about how exactly did they got the ideas and inspiration to write these books. I know you've written on so many themes and impressive subject line that are quite educative. But then I'd love to ask you, how do you get your inspirations and ideas for these books? Hey, listen, all praise to the most high. I you know, um, you know. Just, just the unknowing fact, Peter, just the unknowing mm. fact of what, you know, I was taught, you know, and when you stand back and when you take a, a broad scope on how, mm. how society is played out, or you just look at a broad scope on how everything is, I mean, from beginning to end, um, mm. you know, what I, what I wasn't taught in school, you know, why are there so many European statues out here, European paintings, you know, it has to be, listen, we're the greatest people on this planet. You know, whether or not people want to admit that or not, or whether you're ashamed. Why are you why are so many of our people they're ashamed to admit that? It's almost like we're scared to be great. We're scared to be the people, you know, who we, you know, who we are, our forefathers. You know, we mm -hmm. came over here and built this society up. You know, you got a a man by the name of Alexander Miles, I think in 1887, that built the elevator, that that constructed the elevator. You got John Burr that invented the more you have a guy by the mm. name of John Standard that invented the refrigerator. So these yeah. are our forefathers, and I say this all the time, Peter. When we were brought from the interiors of Southwest Africa during uh, the late 1500s to the 1600s, there was yeah. no colleges or there was no institutions or no trade schools here that was waiting for us. We went from the ships to the auction blocks, and we went straight to work. All right. Mm. We were the engineers. We were the kings. We were the princesses. OK. Mm. And we're still those people in captivity. That's what gives me my inspiration. OK. Just teaching and acknowledging and, and giving people that understanding that we're greater than society portrays us as. You know, you go to school, they'll, they'll, they'll portray you as just someone that came over here. You listen, you know, to, to Europeans and the colonists and you had no yeah. part in inventing anything and you had no part. That's a lie, man. We invented yeah. everything imaginable. WB, WB, I think Wells invented that microphone, okay, that you're mm. actually talking on right now. We invented everything. We were just incorporated, okay, by mm. corporations over a period of time. That was it. Absolutely. They took our genius, our inventions, and they yeah. just incorporated it over a period of time. That's about it. Now, if something mm. like that doesn't excite you about your gene pool that you come from i don't know what else will you can go back <laughs> to anything brother peter okay i'm talking about anything a pen a pencil a wallet um mm. a computer anything that's things that our forefathers invented and they took the wow. credit facts wow, wow. Well, that's quite deep, really. That's quite beautiful. That's quite profound. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning. Thank you for mentioning. And now, apart from the books we've mentioned so far, do you have any other works you've altered or say currently working on? And just in case you have any ideas for or advice for struggling writers, what would that be? Um, yeah, actually, you want to know something, Peter? I actually um um, I have a book that I've been writing for the last past two years. It's funny, oh. but I've been writing this book for the last past two years. Um, and I haven't gotten past the second chapter yet because I have so much oh. to do. Um, that's really taking my time away from it. But, um, yeah. actually I, I said to myself last night, 
oh, a week ago. I said I have to actually I have to complete this book. It's called the it's called um take another look. So mm -hmm. in this book, actually it's gonna detail everything, every bridge, every street, um, everything over here in America and across the world that's actually named after conquering European colonists. Everything that you see, everything that you see, Peter, I don't care what it is, you know, um, it can be Columbus University, which is named after Columbus. We don't mm. have to get into what, he, into what he did. It can be the George Washington Bridge. So mm. a lot of times when you kind of look, look at it, America patronized, okay, these guys and, you know, they patronized these symbolisms um, mm. and it's a deeper meaning you know, it's a deeper meaning behind that. Like I come from Brooklyn, you know, um, you know, um, in Brooklyn and Bedford Stuyvesant, Peter Stuyvesant, you know, you have a lot of, uh, you know, blacks and Puerto Ricans and West Indians that live in Bedford Stuyvesant. Peter Stuyvesant, the, the, the place that Bedford Stuyvesant was named after, Peter Stuyvesant had over 50 slaves. So mm -hmm. this is stuff that don't get mentioned, but his name, Bedford Be Stuyvesant is named after Peter Stuyvesant. And a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know this, Okay, because why? Because this is the deception that people don't, they really don't Absolutely. tell you. So this particular book is going to be actually close to maybe 300 pages, you know, wow. um, what we just don't know and we see in our everyday <laughs> life. That's very, wow. very, very important to us, you know, and um, my advice actually to uh, upcoming um, authors is that um, never put that pen down. I don't care what you, I don't care what you do. Never put that pen down, Peter. You know, mm. um, if you got an idea, if so, a thought comes to your head, write it down. You know, um, you know, just write it down. I still got sticky notes uh, in my car. <laughs> and I still got sticky notes from when yeah. I wrote my first book, you know, that I'm looking back on. I'm saying, damn, you know, I still got this from 2012. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, that's, listen, let me hit you in the head with this too. Yeah. That's what our forefathers did in the past, you know, um, the the modern day phone or you know what we would call the pen way back in 70 AD and before 65 BC, you know, the modern day phone was the paintbrush. You know, so you had our forefathers, what they used to do, they used to actually paint what they saw. So, you know, you have everything back then. That's why we go to, you know, the ancient, you know, countries and you look back on certain things. Everything mm. was painted because, of course, the phone, you know, wasn't invented back then. So, you know, they painted what they saw. So, you know, the modern day paintbrush today is the phone, is the pen. You know, create, you know, create genius for yourself. You know, be great mm. at what you do. And don't be scared, you know, mm. to come out and, you know, don't be scared to come out and, and speak the truth and tell the truth, you know, against all odds. You know, if that's something yeah. that you have to do, that's something that you got to do. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't don't be scared and let society push you in a corner where you're scared Absolutely. to talk to your kids and tell your kids the truth and even bring things to the forefront, you know, in society. Mm. Wow. This is quite amazing, really, Frank. I love your amazing description. And I love the sense of so many books you've written, the titles, the topics, the themes which they expand on, and Thank the you. subject lines really made for an amazing and lovely discussion. And just in case we have some viewers who are currently watching this interview and would love to get a copy of any of your books, on what platform are they available on for purchase? Yeah, you can actually, you can, uh, Brother Peter, you can actually uh, go on Amazon.com. Uh, you can go on Amazon.com and you can um, look up, uh, you can put my full name, uh, Frank, F-R-A-N-K, Zakwan, Z-A-A-Q-A-N, um, Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N.com. And you'll have all my books actually there. Yeah. And again, you know, Brother Peter, thank you so much for having me. And, you know, another thing also is that don't be scared, you know, to come out and, and tell the truth. Society has marginalized us, uh, Peter, yeah. you know, where they're kind of like just zipping us up or try to zip us up. But in these last days, you're going to have men that's going to come out and they're going to have this truth oh. explode yeah. onto the scene. OK, there's Absolutely. a good thing about the Internet and there's a bad thing about the Internet as well. Too. Yeah. You got to kind of pick and marginalize and you got to, you know, pick things that are good and surface things and the things that can benefit you along with your family as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I left a link in the description part of this interview 
or interested viewers can get a copy of Frank Jordan's books directly on Amazon. We have so many of them here. Yeah. Please leave them to the camera just so we can see. We have the Fox one over there, yeah. The Great Text Show on Hurt. We have the other ones. We once were a family. I love the picture of the the uh, you know, I love the pictures you have there in, in the front cover, and the other ones too. You know, um, what's that? Holiday the horses, is, is... yeah, holiday hey, horses. Hey, listen, quite beautiful. Hey, yeah, hey, brother Peter, listen, the holiday hustle. You know, this is one that you definitely want to have in your household. That goes back to actually detailing. That actually goes back to detailing, and that actually goes back to dissecting. You know, um, mm. every so-called holiday, even it goes back to the calendar about the Roman Gregorian calendar as well, too. And it shows you actually the paganisms of everything that's celebrated oh. in society. And it's a reason why you don't find none of these holidays that our people are celebrating. OK, you don't find especially the people that go to church. You can't find one holiday that's on the calendar. OK, that's in the Bible. You can find it. Yeah, I think I read about that from your page. Yeah, I did read about that from your page. Yeah. And the other ones in there to uncovering the evil of America. Yeah. And several other titles that he has had in the discussion part of this interview. So thank you so much, Frank, for thank accepting you. the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's lovely having this conversation with you. Hey, Peter, thank you for having me, man. And hey, listen, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Um, hey, listen, you know, and again, you're doing great things and keep up the good work. And the water you hollow for having me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.